So please settle down so we can get started with our second session of the day. Speaker is uh, Professor Shanwen Kong from Heriport University. He does quite a bit of work in talent mechanisms area, and that's what he's going to talk about. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Shanwen Kong from Heriport University. Um, my university was named after two Scottish people. One is uh, George Herod, the second one is James Watt. I think all of you should know James Watt, who improved the steam engine. So, this slide is two people because they think uh, if you have money and power, you can succeed. So, I university, I'm the University of Edinburgh, and as a Scottish national robotic center. So, we can see the See the logo here is actually the linkage to the class. Uh, use the linkage as a logo of this. Uh, because the robotics are dom dominated by computer science and the control and the electrical engineering. You can see we have many advanced ro robots and they mainly include the control and the system integration. So today, uh, my presentation will be about uh, the three, three topics. One is uh, the brief introduction of the creative design of those products. The first one will be a brief summary of the creative design of the product marketing. The second one will be on the design of the multi mode header mechanism, which are different from the conventional header mechanism. It's been working on in the past 10 years. And the third topic will be on the reconfiguration analysis of the multi mode header mechanism. So the slide shows uh, several robots as well as China robots. We seem to use several arms to control one object. So the video shows uh, my first meeting with Professor Guillermo Gossely from Hanka University. So when I start the on the creative design of a parallel robot. And during that time, many people published papers on the forward kinematics of a parallel mechanism. They all mentioned the forward kinematics is highly non-linear. So I thought later we can find some parallel mechanism with a set of linear input on particle equations. So we found this one. Which has a very simple input application. So, I've been working on multi mode parallel mechanism. So, what does a parallel multi mode parallel mechanism mean? Let's give you one example to show the idea. Let's consider one mechanism, parallel mechanism, shown on the left. So, one plate translates. Along a spherical surface. So it has two degree freedom. So the same mechanism, they can see mechanism we can 
which can realize a different motion. If you have two balls of the same diameter, one ball rolling over another with a twist, how many degrees of freedom does a ball have? Does a ball have two degrees of freedom? You see, the motion of the mechanism changes significantly. <coughs> so it's different from the previous one. For example, this one can only realize translation, three angles translation. So in the past few years, there are many uh, research on uh, reconfigure parallel mechanism. Multi-mode parallel mechanism is only one uh, one class of reconfigurable parallel me mechanism. So this uh, shows several other types of uh, reconfigurable parallel mechanism which I want to mention in details. So the slide shows uh, the conferences on parallel mechanism. Every six years, there will be one conference on parallel mechanism. There will be one conference on reconfigurable re 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 mechanism and robots every three years. So the next one will be 2020 parallel mechanism. And the next one on reconfigurable mechanism and robots will be in 2021. The most the motivation for my work is um, personalization of the products. When I left the UK, you can see the cars of different size, different shapes. Usually, the cars are quite much smaller than the cars in the USA because uh, the petrol in there is very expensive, expensive, and the streets are narrow. So in 2013, the um, there were six projects supported by EPS, actually similar to the NSF here. So six, uh, maybe two million to four million each for six, uh, for six projects and for uh, one of the projects, which is a very comfortable manufacturing system. I'll show you one video shows the idea of combining different grippers into one group. For example, a tweezer is used to grasp from very tiny objects. So we designed that is a student to that. One gripper which combined which can be used to grab different sets of objects as well as tiny objects. As the tape is a critical. So it's a belong to uh, the multifunctional mechanism. Okay. Multimodal parallel mechanism, one class of such a mechanism. So this is uh, very difficult to grasp. Because the video is quite long, that shows you the rough idea. Um, this group is uh, an integration of uh, tweezer and uh, conventional and quite uh, two groups. Let me like you know to make a connection with the lecture by a professor in my country. Plan of mechanics can be used to for the windows, you know. Uh, I got to the figure, the picture is the picture not clear. So, the so picture on the left shows the normal, that the normal open mode. This is uh, difficult to clean all the sand. Because uh, you can, people can use a robot or use a vector to clean from the screen. The, the window can be cleaned, uh, can be opened as a slightly kind of mechanism. So you can we can clean both sides of glass. This can also be regarded as a multi-mode mechanism. When no more mode you know, when clean mode. Now I will start 
And on the first topic, great example of error mechanism. So, what is treat design? Uh, it means to design appropriate mechanical structures, architectures for specified design, uh, or specified design specification, for example, motion requirement. For example, for the case here, we consider three actually translation with application. So we have many design. And then we need to select several one or two design from many solutions. We will take this one. So this slide has give you some rough idea of a number of books have been published on relevant to creative design of parallel mechanics. So the, the list, this is one we published and, uh, a few months ago to some manage. So different uh, national tools has, uh, have been used to design parallel mechanics from group theory to screw theory as well as uh, use a normal vector approach. So the different approaches are different problems. So in the, in the national some school, uh, in a few years many participants ask me which approach is better. Uh, Depending on their background, asymmetrical background, uh, similar to what we use you know, in, in China and uh, uh, some uh, Asian countries, we use chopstick. <laughs> chopstick. And uh, we all, all the people use spoon. So, approach, uh, I was just introduced the idea briefly. Introduce the idea briefly. It's been published uh, as Stephen Springer was translated into Jazz from the Chinese. It's been taught in several international summer schools as well as a workshop at the ISB conference. So I'll show you uh, a second, videos, second video of the mechanism we obtained using this approach uh, by introduce. Video shows a four degree freedom handle mechanism, which can generate three axis translation plus one rotation about the work process. It's called the scrum robot, scrum motion. It's a very popular side motion pattern in work. So, what is the structure of each of the individual chains? So, we can see here there's, this one can only utilize uh, translation. And three rubber joints along the graph axis, uh, on the three joints, and then uh, and a first leg control rotation. I just have to give you some rough idea of how this approach can be used. So, the basic idea and the kind of approach is to use the networks to similar to building. To build Similar to building toys using different components. So we don't want to derive so many equations. So the idea is how to select components. So we want to put a four wheel government for what components we need to select. Regarding the parallel mechanism, parallel mechanism is similar. We start from motion requirement. Two axis translation or three axis translation or rotation of one point, so there are different requirements. Okay. Then we can design parallel mechanisms. So, uh, different approach used in different ways. I will introduce a way that have been used in the past 10 years. So, there are two key concepts in the approach. One is a uh, voltage. I will introduce it, which is a simple kinetic change represent motion. We don't use, use mathematical equations 
to describe the most previous lesson, climate change we can understand to describe the ocean. The second one is a screw theory. For the critical design, we don't need to derive so, so many equations. But we need, I'm sure there's a key concept we need, key results from screw theory we need for the critical design. So once we understand the two concepts, we can build parallel mechanisms by first select components. There are seven class of components in the book. The first construct single loop mechanism and then construct parallel mechanism. So the steps are quite simple. So I'll go through the concept of perfection. And let's consider how to represent uh, three translation, three degree freedom translation. You can use mathematics tools, three angles, perfection angles are constant, x, y, z are three are variables. Or you can use three prismatic joints, uh, comment in series, I think all of us know the motion of the path, and the motion is translation <coughs> along three axes. So the idea to use the vertical chain is when we need the, the chain in the design process, we use it. That's it. it will appear. When we don't need it, it will disappear. So the second is a key result from screw theory for creative design. This is quite simple. I think you all must know how to open. So the key idea is uh, how to figure out who's the uh, implant force or uh, which are opening. It. So it's uh, this, uh, this idea. We can't use the equations, or we can figure out the condition by our daily experience. For example, let's consider the dog with a hint. So if you <coughs> apply force, uh, apply force on the dog. What should be the condition? What should be the line of action of the force in order not to be the force? Either parallel to the axis or intersect with the axis. Just so to give you some idea, you know, I think all of us know the solution. That's the key result from the first theory. So we don't need to write the equation for this one. I don't mind to go ahead. So this slide I showed the condition of the force which cannot produce the motion. I'm very much on it. That's why the moment. If the moment is a if the if the torque, the relevant torque is perpendicular to the axis of the travel joint, it cannot turn. So this is a condition. Now I'll go through the process for more details. First, we'll focus on the multi-mode. So if we want to design a three-axis uh, translation of parallel mechanism, we start with a vertical composed of three prismatic joints. So based on this one, we can, as well as the square theory, I just mentioned results, we can select the components from that book. For example, one component is composed of prismatic joints and the rubber joints with parallel axis. The numbers can be as many as you need. For example, for the case here, we select a component composed of seven joints to construct a single loop mechanism. And then combine it three loops that we want to use to contract three leg parallel mechanism. So we use three loops combine them together. As I mentioned, the third here, we don't, don't need it anymore. Okay. So we can remove it. Okay. Uh, three, three different freedom parallel mechanism for translation. So this uh, mechanism I showed in, in my first 
So, no matter what approach you use to design parallel mechanisms with a given uh, motion requirement, for example, plan motion, uh, 3D freedom rotation, or 4D degree freedom motion, it doesn't matter. We can use the results from the different groups to compose multi mode parallel mechanisms. So, the steps to construct multi-mode me mechanism is very quite simple. The first one is to design labs, because the parameter we cannot compose labs, for parallel mechanism with one function, whether it's translation or applied motion, that's considered for, for each function. So we can select each one from many groups or to can present it to you by yourself. So the second one is to combine the, to the labs for different functions into one. So the key is how to combine uh, labs in, into one to realize different, different functions. And finally, assemble them. <coughs> so I just show you some uh, papers I have published and show you the process in the table. Now, now let's consider, consider one example to construct parallel mechanisms which can realize three different freedom translation. So we use um, vertical and composed of three perspectives. And we use now a spiritual represent the rotation of my point, three different freedom. So, based on these two requirements, for each one we can select a number of structures. We can, at the moment, we can select many from many groups. For example, for one case, for one deck of for translation, is composed of five different zones one, two, three, five. What's the condition? The conditions include the first, the uh, axis, the first and the fifth are parallel. As you are used, yes, you press the unit answer. So, these two are parallel, the three in the middle, two, three, four are parallel. So, the condition for the three to figure out spherical mechanism. Is construct is shown here. Uh, what's the condition? Uh, joint, the axis joint one and joint five in the set at one point. In the set at the center of the second joint. And the uh, axis of uh, two, three, four are parallel. So when we, when we combine these two legs together, there are different ways. We can simplify and place one on top of another. So once you look, all the joints can realize one function. If you look, the top five joints will realize three to freedom translation. But the number of joints is too, too large. So we need to so since the top one needs five joints, the top and the bottom one need five joints. So the minimum number of joints we need is five. There can be six. Five, six, seven, up to ten. Okay. So, question. So, basically, you're cho choosing the chain in such a way that you get a reciprocal screw of that chain, which will then meet your condition of uh, either either design solution. Yes, uh, as I mentioned, uh, at the moment, I don't care about the constraints, the rest of screws, because we select this one based on the results from different approaches. At the moment, as I mentioned, we assume we have the structures. So, so those those chains have been chosen based on the yeah. published results of other people with uh, with uh, that gives you the one degree of freedom that you want uh, either in translation or yeah yes yeah. so three degree of freedom translation or three degree of freedom 
This war has been a pleasure. And it's why you said, my work has been And all of it. So let's compare two cases. One is, uh, one case is composed of five joints. So in order to realize both functions, we need to, the five joints need to satisfy these two conditions, these two sets of conditions. So what's the condition? What's the common condition? So we can say S2, S3, S4, up here and we have to see. The axis of joint one to five are parallel, and the joint axis of joint one to five in the set. What's the common condition these two can reach? The two lines must coincide. You see? In the first case, translation, so the two lines are parallel, the translate, they can reach, coincide, configuration. So this one, rotate. Okay. I rotate from one point, but the instead, so this rotate. The common the condition is the first and the fifth joints coincide. So this is a common condition, which can, so, this, this configuration shows the configuration of common books. Uh, cases for theoretic freedom translation or for theoretic freedom notation. So you can see here, joint one, joint five are done the same line. So you can see from this configuration, you can realize Axis transition, assembly rotation, three to be from rotation of one point. So I travel the, this method in 2007, but this one is not practical to show the concept. So let's consider we want to construct a lens composed of six points. So in this case, you can select uh, one, two, three, four in common. And then <coughs> one, two, three, four plus the fifth is the original for three different frame of translation. But for example, the sixth one is the original fifth one for three different frame of rotation. So one, two, three, four are common to both. This slide shows the mechanism uh, which uh, has 60 degree freedom uh, after load. Uh, three joints on the top, we can realize uh, three degree freedom. Uh, I'll see that clearly. It's a uh, motion and a uh, uh, block. Another three set joints, we can realize three degree freedom. So the idea is to construct a kind of a multi-mode parallel mechanism uh, <coughs> simple, uh, from the same common configuration. So smaller number of joints you need, just three the condition. You need more joints, the condition will be much less. Now the uh, talk about the third topic, which uh, is reconfiguration analysis of uh, multi-node parallel mechanism. So the first step is in order to determine all the op operation mode of a mechanism, we need to create first set up the constraint equation. We don't consider the, the inputs. Okay? We don't consider the inputs. We can use the uh, constant equations. And then we use uh, tools from a uh, generic geometry approach. So this approach, can, the, the tools can be used to solve, to solve 
polynomial systems with possible dimensional solutions. Let's consider uh, two planes, uh, two lines inside, another plane inside one point. So it's an isolated solution. If we have two planes uh, inside of at one line is a of dimensional one. So for multi-mode parallel mechanism, this mode involves a polynomial integration of dimension, for example, three degree freedom translation is a degree dimension three uh, three degree freedom of rotation is three to three. For four degree freedom motion the location should be of dimension four. So based on the operation rules, we can find the common count configuration should be the common count configuration transition count, similar to what I showed on the previous slide. The robot can switch from one mode to another. So I can see there are another three steps. The second one, the tools from algebraic geometry we use directly. And in order to use, well, we need to do select the coordinates properly in order to simplify the solution. Similar to the foundation by <coughs> Professor Mac, because we he use geometry. So the different tools, or some people use SOLIDWORKS directly, and then many of them use his own code, motion, motion team. So there are different tools. So for this one, uh, although we people can use a simple tool, we need to s s create, set up the equation in, the, in a way which should be facilitate the solution. So I, I use uh, coordinates to represent the motion and uh, represent rotation. Plus the coordinate to represent the translation. So there will be three, seven variables to represent the motion on vertical, one point plus rotation using coordinates. The professor Jeff is present in the coordinates. Um, goes through the kinematic interpretation of some special coordinates. Other coordinates have been used in kinematics for many years, or in the Earth's dynamics for many years. We will show you some results we <coughs> proposed a few, um, few years ago. So this one, just as we call um, what Professor uh, has presented, we use different uh, notations. We use one uh, parameters, E0. E1, E2, E3, because there are four components of the quaternion. You can see the rotation about U and theta, the cosine of theta plus U sine of theta. So this is a constraint. The unit quaternion should, should, should be the sum of the square of the four components of the one. So consider a three axis translation in three dimensional space. We know we have three variables, x, y, z. If we set one coordinate equal to zero, we know that the uh, radial coordinate will translate on our plane. And for the coordinates, it has four components. So let's consider if we set one, two, three components to zero. What would be the physical meaning for the coordinates? Because uh, although general meaning is uh, clear, you know, the coordinates, the rotation um, axis of certain degrees. And it's not, it's not easy, you know, if you rotate uh, general vector of, for example, 40 degrees, the meaning is unclear for us. Because we cannot imagine the most clear. Well, let's consider so many combinations we can have by 
if I set in different number of zeros to the four components. Either I'm zero or one, or not zero. Each one has two speeds, two possibilities. So in total, it should be 16 degrees, 16 cases. However, since the, the constraint, the sum of the square of the four components should be equal to one, so we have only 15 cases. So we can see the cases for the uh, three, four cases with three zeros. So the meaning is uh, quite clear. Uh, e zero, uh, in the first case, zero, zero, zero. So what's the meaning? Cosine, we can see e, e zero equal to one. So theta, theta is equal to zero. So this means there's no motion or no transformation. How about the second one? The second one, because the first one is equal to zero, this uh, rotation should be 180 degrees. So this one is a half, half turn rotation about x times. So I don't want to go through all the, all the cases and consider one case. Is considered uh, case number number six. So e zero zero e two zero. So what's the meaning? Because these two are variables. So the meaning you can consider it's a rotation about a very axis. The if we So this one, so this one is quite clear. Uh, the rotation about the axis. So what I want to uh, this kind is a number, case number ten. So this case is uh, the first component. Uh, uh, first component are equal to zero. So if you can, this case involves a rotation about one pair of axes, so it's unclear because the G1, G2 changes. So it's unclear the physical meaning. So if we use the rules about the coordinates, we factor this one, E1i plus E2i, to G, into this case. We can consider this random the motion stand from half rotation about the x axis, I means half rotation about the x axis, and the rotation about z axis. Okay. So from this one, we can have a clear kinematic interpretation of the coordinates with different z components. So for the case with one z components, because these are similar to the rotation of human eyes. There's no twist in the particular rotation. For well, this case, it's represented by half rotation about the axis and the uh, translate uh, rotation about the vector U. So, based on the kinematic interpretation, we can identify the motion characters of a number of parallel mechanisms. I'll show you, I'll go through the examples. Now let's consider the case which I mentioned before, the case with it can realize three axis translation and three axis in a clear the video. So for this case, for that case, we apply additional conditions to make the three rubber joints on the platform possible in the inside of one point. And the case, the axis on the base in the side of one point possible. And uh, this slab is composed of flat joints. You can see it, uh, 
and that can reach a contribution to the one and five uh, axis. Two, three, four have parallel axes. So what's the condition of this? Of the axis, joint five and joint one. This is the end of final motion. This is the axis now also perpendicular to the axis. Joints two, three, four. So they are always on the same plane. So based on this one, we can write up a kinematic equation. So to re recap, the transformation matrix I have just for the use, we multiply the transformation vector at a, a point. Oh, we write on the transformation <coughs> matrix. In fact, we can write on the matrix directly. We transform the vector and the i x x axis y axis and z axis we can obtain the vectors along the vectors are moving frame. So these three when you write on the three vectors we can obtain the transformation issues. So uh, this uh, condition I just mentioned the axis must the two axis must be complementary and then the equations um, for instance should appear and uh, in order to use uh, uh, tools from algebra, algebra geometry, we can write the form for uh, the polynomials on the left hand side plus the ideal, which is called the ideal. Flat metal, we can use the term. So we have three polynomials. Uh, we have our constraint. So we have four equations. In the as you clear, we have three different freedom, generally three different But we need to know exactly what would be the motion. So now on this slide, I'll sh I show you. So there are free wire. Uh, if you click the link, you can solve the equation. The code is here. So the code is the same one. But the slide and the code is the code I'll show you. Click the link on the slide, you can find the, uh, the web page of the software. And then you can copy the code. You can copy the code, you can find the solutions. So there, there are 16 set of solutions. So there are two components for each solution. Uh, and remember, for this one, we can use a second one. We can use a second solution. It's called a prime component. The first one is called a primary, primary component. We can use a second one. For example, for, this, for the first solution, we use this one. x equals 0, y equals 0, z equals 0. Means the rotation of one point. Because this point is fixed. So the second one, we can say, because for the three equations, I didn't include the constraint, the sum of square equal to one. So that's why uh, we can see the solution here. We can see the solution here. So this one is equal to zero. So the solutions are the, all the polynomials are equal to zero. The sum of the four square of the four components are equal to zero. So this one should be removed because we didn't include the constant. 
in the equation. So the second solution is not the solution. So in the remaining, you can see uh, in total there are 16 solutions, only in fact there are only 15 solutions. You see that the constraints in the end. So, so I clarified the 15 cases, for example, this for uh, pure translation. So the, the first one is translation. The second, the fourth, uh, first uh, goes through a transformation. Rotation about the axis, y axis, or z axis, and 100 degrees, and the translation. This time, motion. There are six plan motion. Yes, based on the uh, physical medium, we know these are plan motions. So the first one, uh, the fifth, seventh, ninth, is exactly plan motion. <coughs> So six is intense. You need to rotate, transfer rotate by uh, 100 degrees about certain x or y axis, and then go through the motion. So this cases. And then uh, the four cases here shows, for example, this one, so rotation about an axis for 180 degrees. So, the three cases is rotation transform. Rotation about <coughs> axis, x, y, z axis by one degrees as it rotates about uh, a vector by 180 degrees. Z, z. So the last one is a spherical motion. X, y, z. You can see the mechanism is very special because uh, there's one. One one correspondence between the rotation in each mode, as well as the 15 classes of special coordinates. Now we can go through another example as well. One X, one X size. So this mechanism has been proposed. In 1996, which composed of eight joints: one, two, three, four, five, six. Other axes, seven, eight are collinear. This is the transition. And then when you move out, when this one is collinear, it's a plane motion. Okay. And uh, on the right, when you rotate the half, the right half uh, about the Cracks and axis, they become a cylindrical motion, rotation and translation. So it has been known as there are two modes. So we need to use the approach I just mentioned to identify all the motion modes. So we can use the approach in dimensions, the equations, the sphere. So we can solve the equation manually because this one is very simple. Um, I think uh, uh, if you have internet access, you can try this one. 
So the idea is this is the equation. Just modify. You place the equation on the side. You place the equation. The red one as the equation in the first example. So you place the red one with new equation. So in the, you need to not to use this one, you can keep the library name and also you need to keep the, the options. Because there are many options. Some options are much more efficient than other options. This one you need to keep this one. Because they're different. The algorithms to solve the equation. This is one algorithm. Propose the three, the name of the three. Do you want to, to try? Another question. So, how do you uh, map that to the, the, the different modes, the, the results that you get out of this decomposition? Yeah. How, is that all the modes that are there? Or yeah, if you have the mode, if you have the, for the first case, we have 15 solutions. Okay. Because we have an original Cartesian equation. This equation can be decomposed. You have solutions. The solution include, uh, in the solutions include 15 cases. So each one for the special case, each one has a three different freedom. For this case, we can also, maybe I can show you the solution because um, most of you may not have <laughs> internet access. So I, I will switch off uh, the foundation to show you the solution for this one. So um, if you want to use approach, you can keep, keep the, the code in, in, in black. Okay. Replace the equations using Uh, for this case, we can see clear. This side. Okay. Uh, let's see how many variables do we have here. Is there any one between these three? Let's see. Zero. Because why? Here. So we have six variables. However, you will observe z equals zero. So you know we can remove this one from the equation. So we have five equations, five variables at this case. So you can use six variables similar to the case here. You can use and this one. So it's a large number of variables. The slow of the solution. So we use this one. We use uh, a case with five variables. So we can see we have five solutions. Among the five, five solutions, the fifth one, so on the screen, has to be removed. Because these four components cannot be equal to them. So we have four solutions. We start here, <coughs> three, and the uh, easier one. So it means our planar motion. And the uh, e one, two, and equal to zero is also planar motion. So e zero, e three, and equal to one means inverted. First, turn the platform by. 180 degrees and the uh, kind uh, motion. So, you can see that this one has three degree freedom for the two cases. And how about the other two cases? This one, x equal to zero.
first of all, as you know, why is forever? Why is why is uh, why is your free will? So that's why we can see there are two so two different freedom mode and uh, two three different freedom mode. <coughs> But uh, this part that shows mode okay, is a kind of motion. <coughs> zero, one is uh, uh, this one you can see is uh, first rotate the platform about z axis at uh, one hundred and eighty degrees and then uh, uh, for this one. So this one is a uh, similar motion. So I hope you have a rough idea how to map the motion of the moving platform for this moment. For this solution, you can look at the table if you are not clear. Because you have a table where you can map the position of the special coordinates. So this, this slide just shows how to optimize the transition combination. For example, if you Combine the two equations to one final solution is a transition configuration. So uh, this slide shows the transition of this mechanism among the four operating modes. Previously, ten years ago, they know there are two modes in the hops. Or this one can switch from one mode to another. So the, the figure on the right hand side shows how to transit from the one mode to the other mode. So there must be a pass. You cannot tran transit directly from this mode to this mode. This shows. We have built, we have tried, my PhD student tried to design a physical prototype to realize the full circle. It's impossible, at least, have not achieved this. So we can only achieve here to, so this one can move. But there is some point, the uh, physical interference. Just show you the video. So this are uh, initial to show from the one to another and then from the other. So we have not achieved to realize all the motion of uh, just to give you a rough idea of it. Uh, have time to go through the details. So now we uh, move on to the last example to show the, the case of uh, the mechanism I mentioned at the beginning. Because we, we de when we design this mechanism, 2015, we know there are two modes, two motion modes. So we need to decide how the motion mode or the motion modes this mechanism we have in order to control it. Using a similar approach with the set of equations, constant equations, and then we can see there are four constant equations. <coughs> the distance between the center and the center of the platform is equal to, uh, is constant. So uh, this mechanism is different from uh, the one that present with 15 option modes. But this is like has four joints. One, two, three, four. Previously, in the middle, we have three joints with the parallel axis. And for this mechanism, we have two joints with the parallel axis in the middle. That's the difference. So, in this case, we have one additional cultural equation. So, the distance between OP and O is constant. 
So we can solve this <coughs> using a similar approach to solve the equation. And then in order to simplify the solution, we don't we didn't include the this kind of this kind of equation equation. Otherwise we take a little number. Because this one can be included later on. Distance between the power constant, we don't include this one in the solution. Process of the opinion. So, after solving the three equations, we obtain uh, uh, 10 components, 10 solutions, and the sum don't have a real solutions. So, we can remove those. Uh, the number 8 is removed because the distance should be equal to 8, not 0. So we need to remove this one. So in this case, we have 6 solutions in total. So what's the meaning? We, for following a table, we can obtain so the detailed uh, slide that show you the meaning. So uh, two modes of Double freedom CPL translation, so the translation of, of an object along a CPL surface. So, this is the first case we should have seen the video. This one is the inverted process. First, the short is the path from about x or y axis at 180 degrees and then translate. So, this one here. This one is similar to the Planner theorem to our mechanism. It's a two degree freedom. So this one is a, a spherical, which I call the sphere on sphere rolling mode. One sphere rolling mode. The, the bottom case is first rotate the platform about the axis or y axis by 180 degrees and go through rolling motion. This shows uh, the transition configuration, so we can see clearly the path to how to switch, it, how to switch <coughs> among these six uh, two degree freedom motion. So, in summary, I will present briefly. But the idea for the vertical approach to design the parallel mechanism as well as the multi mode parallel mechanism. So, algebra, algebra, algebra geometry tool is very efficient, very useful for the multi mode parallel mechanism to identify all the option modes. So, there are many other tools, many softwares. Such a label is not so good. We have the many solutions which are redundant. So the contact for you said uh, yes, the they don't know the reason. As well as uh, I think the kinematic interpretation of quaternions with zero components are very useful to identify the motion of a number of parallel mechanisms. Although this is uh, quite special, because in, and in fact, in many cases, the motion encountered in a practical are quite special. So I think there's some, uh, this should be quite useful in some cases. So I'll show you the video I took. Let's see. Sorry. Observe two or three minutes, we can discuss. <laughs> so, so, observe the clock here, see what's happening. <laughs> Stop.
So, uh, when you, you see the video, uh, what's happening here? <laughs> and also, the sweat clock, I saw the people the cleaning the clock. And even if he is walking, <laughs> every minute it's for the minute time. So, the world wants. And that means that, you know, there are some designs may not work. <laughs> So I'll show you the person. So we have many designs, some designs may work well, some designs may not work. <laughs> uh, I mean, I mean, I I'm trying to quickly I'll show you additional things that we still have some time. Okay. I'll show you the meaning of the video I took. Okay. So it's all quite a time, you know, you need to stand up. Okay. It, it was all the, you know, just a job, clean, <laughs> every minute. <laughs> so, maybe I found it quickly. I saw the finish, it should be finished. So, we still have uh, half an hour. I'll show you additional. So, um, I, I have a question here. Fantastic to see this. Now, if suppose you have to design a, a parallel mechanism, right? let's say based on certain observational data, yeah. let's say from the human human body, let's say the human body, and I want to sort of fit in a, a a spatial, let's say parallel mechanism to best mimic the movement that I've seen from motion capture. How would I go about designing it? So yeah, there are some limitations. Of the count is an approach. You cannot generate all the motions, for example, for example, radical freedom motion, similar to, uh, to the classical one. As a linkage, you may not realize all the configurations accurately. So, given the motions, so we can find some, we need to use optimi optimization. optimization to generate the special. For the case you mentioned, four degree freedom, two translation, and two rotation, we can do this. Then no problem. So we can many times. But, I, but I, I mean, you have to kind of do the type synthesis, and then you have to do the dimension synthesis, right? Yeah, yeah. Really? So, so the question is, how, how do you sort of go about doing that this is the best type synthesis for, for the motion that you observe? So the first step is to list as many designs as possible. And then based on the experience of some preliminary criteria to remove some and then, uh, then go on to the kinematic design or even dynamic design or the simulation. So it's a very long process. So I just show uh, my team uh, kind of the color is only one lamp. At the moment, one has found a job on set up with their own company. Of course, how we set up with their own company on their group at the moment. As we want to work in the group, we knock his own company, he has some funding from the local government. There's 20 people working for him. So regarding uh, the answer, we still have a few minutes and I made a mistake about the time. Uh, this time is uh, this course. Uh, regarding the case, I want to mention the case of uh, selection, the uh, auto set out, caught in the frame on the moving platform. So this one may affect the uh, um, solution. For example, previously we set the uh, x, the x axis along the moving platform, x, y, z, here, in a negative direction. If we, if we rotate this way, for example, here in y, x, z axis, if you uh, 
create is a constant equation. And the sum of the equation to the software, you can find the solutions are very complicated. So sometimes you also need to find it. Uh, once you have some, go through some examples, you may find some tricks uh, to select components. So the key is to try to make the equations as simple as possible. Um, we also, from the videos, we can see uh, it's difficult to transit from one configuration to another because it goes through the constant single configurations. So we have, we have designed uh, a physical one we can realize the uh, transition between four option modes, x, y, z. 3x translation, and uh, this one is plan motion about x, y plane. This one is translation about x, y plane and rotation about x axis. This one is translation about y, z plane, rotation about z axis. So we use the parallel grounds to block the joints, release from one side of the parallel ground. And the lobes the side of the parallelogram in order to ensure we can transit from one of the original to So this slide shows a four option mode. So this one is a three action translation show you then the kind of motion of twice translation plus one so these four of the options operation modes. Um, and then we also designed a complaint of motion state for the natural assembly. So we use a voice coil the motor to control. So this video just shows the assembly of the lens of a camera as it quite small to the case. So the, you can see the lens is here. So that means it is the, the calibration to know where the group and the object are. And the project that I'm working on at the moment is to control um, CPV the solar panel. So we have about um, one solar cells. So each one is one solar cell. So we use uh, two motors to control the orientation of the one solar cells at the same time. So this this source. The cell rate should be all parallel, and you can see uh, the one on the corner are not parallel. So if, if they are all parallel, all, all, the, all, the lines should be, all the cells should be uh, bright. So these are also are parallel mechanisms is used, which is used to control. There are many, many outputs. Uh, this slide shows uh, the problem and mechanism uh, that student designed. So you can compare joints. So these are all based on the design approach application. Uh, uh, the approach will extend this one to the problem. So the, the last slide I want to show is um, option modes. Uh, previously we mentioned the motion might be quite different. The degree of freedom might be different. For example, uh, in one case we showed 
uh, in one mode we have three degree of freedom. In one mode, the same motion has two degree of freedom. So the degree of freedom may change. Uh, the first example shows the degree of freedom may not change, as your motion are different. For example, translation or rotation. This one is uh, quite special because the motion are similar. Only the direction of the rotation are different. The direction of the rotation are different. So we can see the case here. <coughs> so the rotation about this axis and the translation. That's two different freedom. And in the second mode, we can see clear the axis rotation has changed. And then I also can translate. So, type of motion are the same. So, I change uh, of the modes of the same. Okay, that's um, my, all my presentations. Uh, I still have a few minutes. If you have any questions, you can just Yes, back there. So, you talked about these different modes. How do you physically transition between one mode and the other? Uh, so, I, under, I uh, presume that at those transition configurations, the, the system would be unstable. Yeah, as, um, I mentioned, the, as I mentioned before, you know, uh, in a transition, transition configuration, it's called a constant signal configuration. Instantaneous degree of freedom is more than we need. So, therefore, we design and try to find uh, some ways to ensure we can transmit traffic from one mode to another. Uh, one case is to use additional joints. Although, in theory, we don't need to use uh, the joints uh, in the option mode, but we do we add additional joints. For example, for the case, for the delta law of three axis translation, we use parallel graph. Yeah. Also, we don't need to use parallel graph because we use rubber joints. Uh, in order to ensure we can transmit, transit from one mode to another, we use some additional local joints, which are affecting the operation modes. So, this deal uh, opens you. <laughs> Any other questions? So since we have some time, I just want to touch upon the question that you asked Sean right, about if you have a human motion and you want to design a parallel mechanism, yeah. uh, how do you go about doing that? I don't work in parallel mechanism media, so I know, I know nothing about that. But yeah. uh, what we have found is, recently, is that if you have a motion, you cannot really do what, what has been done traditionally in mechanical synthesis, which is to start by picking a type, then computing the dimensions. Because the information to compute the type and dimension is really embedded in the given problem. So, if we separate those two, if you decouple those two problems, which seems to be sort of the way we have done because it's natural, it's easier, we pick the type and then we just compute the dimension and it turns into a math problem after that. But then the question is how do you pick the right type? And if you pick the wrong type, you will you may never be able to compute the dimension, right? It's, we know that if you have five position synthesis problem, you may not find any four bar, right? Or you may find a four bar, but you tweak one of the positions just slightly, and then the four bar disappears. So that kind of tells you that you really, you know, cannot pick the type arbitrarily. 
you have to compute it in some way. So, okay. so, so this is a, a sort of an ongoing problem in my yeah. group. Yeah. When we look at a lot of human movement data, right, coming out from, I mean, just like we had a, well, a neck design, neck, neck brace design, or you have an upper body design. And we want, want something that is variable by the human body, and that's why we like parallel mechanisms, because that could be easily you know, uh, put it around the human body. And, and of course, the, the open question is, uh, how do you choose, first of all, the degree of freedom, uh, the, the type, uh, the geometry, and, and you may have other constraints, will be force constraints and things like that. So, so it's kind of really an interesting open question, and I was wondering what kind of uh, insights that we can get to, to design these uh, in an appropriate manner. Um, I think, as I mentioned, uh, when of the case you mentioned, what you refer to as translation has to be artificial. We can design some kind right, right. of but, but there will be artificially kind of choose that yeah. that structure. Yeah. Yeah. But that but that may limit the movement because of the choice of the structure. Yeah. So you can increase the degree of freedom. You have more options. As well as well, for some applications, it was a similar to the classical and the method of design. There are some locations which cannot be used. You cannot be realized. Uh, actually, using the linkage mechanism, have to use have to use optimization using a classical combination of classical design with uh, more advanced uh, artificial intelligence or any computation approach. Maybe maybe Mike uh, Mike can Mike can have some insights. Yeah, he has been awfully quiet. <laughs> yes, we expected that he would jump in and. Enlighten us with this wisdom. No, this stuff is so amazing. I, 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 I'm, I'm in awe. I've never heard anything negative or bad from Mike ever. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I just want to one small story is that I thought working with a colleague in China that we found this whole new uh, way to make parallel mechanisms where you sort of hide a. Uh, a Point in there by using a, a minor or spherical mechanism. Are you talking about Professor Fungal? Yeah. Yes. No, it was with uh, Ju Li. Okay. At, uh, and I want to say, Shang Wen was so kind when he reviewed the paper and he said, This is a very good paper. You just might want to take a look at my paper on this similar subject. Very nice he was identifying a way to identify the uh, parallel structures by which I thought was unique. It was really well done. So I, I'm, in, I'm very impressed by this. Yeah, Professor Feng Gao from Shanghai Jiaotong has done some types of this is for the pattern mechanism in the aggregated sequence. But again, that's not combined type in the mission yeah. <laughs> It just focuses more on the types of this is for how you make the type. So I uh, have some uh, collaboration with a French team, you know. Uh, they are very strong in the optimization of space, similar to the position of the optimum zone. So we do the product, do work on the theoretical design of the machine. Because the more, the larger the number of the more, the more. So, the past number of constant security. So maybe the person I think two of the most high good. We can ask you have the remote and have if you have uh, too many modes, the workspace for all the problem of the small but the space is spread into many regions. Uh, that's part of the area of the So one idea of the hockey is to use this one as a choice. You know, if you convey, for example, the, the video I showed at the beginning, as a as a two modules, <coughs> a circle, you can use if you like straight translation or the channel.
But how much even we use the three joints, three set modules, as a sixth degree of inferior joint. So if the three joints are all working in two degree freedom of translation mode, it's a redundant three action translation. Our way, uh, interfere, interference, or something. But some other application. So uh, there are some more some works for that. Or just start to show the multi the potential applications, the multiple applications as a as a module in hybrid. Uh, even for the rehabilitation. Sometimes you know, but sometimes you know there's some motion or other times you know, other motion. Combination of things that Right. Any more questions for Professor Kong? Uh, if you have any questions from this morning session, I'm happy to answer. I gave a similar talk a few years ago at our first Kinmani Summer School on Cochinians and Clifford Algebra. So I'm so, happy to answer questions. So what, 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 one question that I had, yeah. I, I don't know enough about it, uh, but in the quaternions that uh, Professor Gerb mentioned in the morning, uh, you, you had the Q4 and Q1, Q2, Q3, and in the work that uh, Sean uh, was presenting, there's a 0, E1, E2, E3, yeah. right? So what's, what's, a, what's a difference? What's the difference? What's the effect of the Q4 being 0 uh, on, uh, on interpretation <laughs> of the information? Well, so there is, if you look at the literature, Different people write first of all quotients in different ways. So there is a little abuse of notation. Literature. We each generally write like Q4 to mean the scalar quantity, and then Q1, Q2, Q3 are the vector quantity. Right. Some people write that as uh, uh, you know, E0 instead of uh, you know, Q0. But these are not to be confused with the unit vectors. These are these are same as. So Q4 is equivalent to E0, exactly. Exactly. I don't think that E0 is equal to 0, but it's not true. No, no, so Q4 is E0, so different people write this in different ways. Some people write, you know, Q1 for this and Q2, Q3, Q4. Yeah. We prefer to write it as Q4, Q1, Q3, Q3, because these are truly homogeneous coordinates. Quaternions are homogeneous coordinates, so they belong to the three-dimensional particular space. Uh, and, and they have a typical homogeneous coordinate, 4D, we write it as you know, W1, W2, W3, and W4, where W4 is a homogenizing factor. So Q4 here, or E0 in Sean Wen's case, serves as the homogenizing factor. You know. So if I, if I were to use this, uh, uh, the Euler, this uh, quaternion representation of the motion versus a uh, typical 4x4 four four matrix representation, uh, if you were to sort of describe in a nutshell, what, what is the advantage of using one or the other? Yeah, so there was a slight that uh, Professor Gare had on advantages of using quaternions. First of all, it's very compact. There are only four numbers you need to describe. Eventually, the computer doesn't, right? So it doesn't really matter to us it's compact or not. Sure, that's okay. So let me talk about the other advantages. The other advantages are the interpolation. That's a big that's a big <laughs> advantage because if, when you have 4 by 4 homogeneous matrices, if you do interpolation between two 4 by 4 homogeneous right. matrix, the, the, the upper 3 by 3 may no, no longer be orthonormal after doing the interpolation. So then you have to use some sort of orthogonalization procedure to convert that into an orthonormal matrix. With quaternions, you don't have any of those problems. So you can do concatenation, you can do interpolation, but the, 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 the this is something that you might say very well is that you can treat them as points in a three-dimensional project in space, and which means that now you can use pretty much all CAD algorithms like <coughs> least spline pair generation, Bayesian pair, or subdivision curves in the in the quaternion space, and design the rational curves and map them back into the Cartesian space to get your motions, which are going to be C two smooth motions. So, so that's that's probably as far as we are concerned is the biggest advantage of using quaternions. We can treat that, that, that rotation matrix. Uh, uh, well, so we don't worry about the rotation matrix. We do everything with the quaternion, whether the dual quaternion we do with the dual quaternion. Ultimately, when we want to show the motion in the Cartesian space, we do a final transformation to the 4 by 4 motion. But that's just for the visualization purposes. So if you recall, he was showing these teapots that I produced in my PhD. Uh, they ultimately have to draw them, so we use OpenGL, and OpenGL requires a 4 by 4 modulus transformation matrix, which we get from the quaternion. <laughs> but that's like 
the last step. Everything we do, all the math, everything we do with the butcher. So the, there are several advantages. We don't use it just because it's a tool that nobody understands. <laughs> <laughs> so I have another thing to add to that advantages essentially. So recently what we have found that you can use that in robot motion planning using the old ideas of resolved motion rate controls by Whitney and actually add something for collision avoidance and do the whole motion planning avoiding any motion planning in joint space. So that can potentially give lots of advantage in terms of applications in motion planning when your dimensions get higher. Thank you for this. Yes. Any other questions from this morning session? I know Professor Dea had to leave. Uh, he couldn't answer any questions, but there are several people in this room, and, and, and the best person to answer any questions related to those things is Professor McCarthy sitting back there. <laughs> uh, but yes, we, we are waiting for the questions. Uh, we still have a few more minutes before starting the lunch. Mark, you have a question? You have an answer? Uh, I, I do. <laughs> I'm picking on you. Um, I mean, it, it kind of goes back to the application. Yeah. So, I mean, for a multimodal parallel mechanism, what are the most kind of exciting applications that, that you can traverse in terms of like uh, for this sort of robot to go? So, um, I once started a project where you have an idea, which is, you know, same learning. There are several roles, you one role, and some, uh, there's some problem, and you can change the function. So even in, in, in the design, we start, uh, start with uh, trans translation and uh, through translation and addition because these two are the most common used applications. So for the multi-mode one, we start, I think, uh, as long as I'm working on the... Uh, I'm working on that one. This one. Because it's uh, a US company. Working on the wrist, I have seen the function of this one. How many, how many wrists? One, two, three, four. I'm not sure if you know that one US company, the, their product is uh, how many wrists? One, two, three, four, two, six. Did you, the function of the same. So that's how we start with. Motion modes with special applications is a companion. Translation is also very popular. Translation and the self action translation. So that's, that's what we start with. Is the wrist or like a robotic hand wrist or like a prosthesis type wrist? So at the moment, uh, what I say, I work for two companies. One company, they came up with a design is, is a mix, is a hybrid system. Is a, there's some component joints, and the design is not work, does not work itself. And then there's really pretty model work perfect. So what I say to them, their design is to design motion stabilizer or uh, payload of 100 kilograms. So they designed this one and they had a mistake. You know, 3D 
printed model works. Okay? So the deformation and clearance of the works. So that design is drawn, in fact. I told them to draw it on one finger, one leg, by 90 degrees. So they made a change. So their product, uh, they, they have sell the real design, real product to their customer. So that's why there's that, still some modifications. So two degrees for now. This may not be relevant here, but I was just curious looking at this. Is there, uh, have you done a lot of work with quaternions to explain the motion of Stuart platforms? Like uh, that's the only parallel? Platform, the platform has 60 degree freedom. And the uh, line work has a flux on the case with less than 60 degree freedom. Because uh, this one, the, the, the minimum might be, the results might be useful. If you consider three degree freedom rotation, as many people know, how it works. Because all the uh, components of the is are variables. So my main contribution is on uh, this slide here. So set some components of a quaternion zero was a motion associated with uh, quaternions. So my main contribution is it's not a general uh, six degree freedom motion or three degree freedom. With limit constraint rotation. All right, okay. Uh, I think we can break for lunch. We're only a few minutes away from our official time for the lunch. So let's thank uh, Professor Shankar Khan once again. <laughs> so we'll be back at 1 30 for our third session of the day. So, most of the Sunday is all the time. Yeah. So, I you understand how can I use it? Yeah, yeah, yeah.